après, euh, juste 12 ans qu'il a le pays a commencé, mais après, euh, ils ont inspiré beaucoup, ils ont tiré beaucoup de leçons qui ont été, euh, comment dire, d'expérience des, des, des pays, euh, des micro, mais aussi des, 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 des marchés internationaux, et ainsi qu'ils ont, euh, en fait, euh, fait, comment ils ont essayé de trouver des solutions dès le départ. Alors, vous avez dit tout à l'heure le focus sur la Mola. D'accord Et surtout, il y, a, il, y a, il, y a, il y a une variation de Mola, c'est le Tavalo qui est vraiment un produit très très controversé. Et à ce moment-là, la réglementation qui était développée en Oman par la Banque centrale omanaise a demandé explicitement d'interdire la, 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 la transaction de Tavalo dans le monde. Alors c'est le premier pays en fait qui est interdit et qui a poussé en fait les acteurs. On, on peut faire de la Mola, parce que c'est de la Mola simple, acheter un bien, vendre. D'accord Avec une marge. On ne peut pas faire de Mouraha ou de Mouraha de, 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 de euh, fabriqué ou des de, de, de termes comme ça. D'accord Donc ça, c'est pas possible. Et ça a poussé en fait le, le, les acteurs du marché d'innover, de trouver d'autres moyens en fait et de s'éloigner parce que là, il n'y a pas de moyens. Alors aussi, c'est la même la réglementation qui impose d'avoir un audit de chéria externe indépendant dès le départ. Donc c'est pas une, euh, dire, une option pour euh, l'intervention des banques, mais c'est une obligation. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a de l'évolution, il y a de focus qui euh, maintenant va à, ailleurs, qui améliore un peu les choses, mais on a, on a fait de longs chemins, mais il reste encore beaucoup de choses. Et vous avez aussi évoqué le point de microfinance qui est important, parce que ça, c'est un sujet vraiment qui est souvent ignoré, malheureusement. On parle beaucoup de secours, on parle beaucoup de banques d'investissement de retail, mais on oublie en fait les, les pauvres et le, le, le segment de marché le plus bas, je dirais, d'un point de, 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 de vue économique. Mais là aussi, on voit beaucoup de développement, beaucoup d'efforts de, euh, qui est fait dans la finance islamique. Il y a plusieurs euh, institutions de la finance islamique qui sont en train de développer à, à travers plusieurs pays, y compris les pays de l'Afrique. Merci. Euh, dernière question. Thank you. 
banking. I think for those, wherever they are in the world at the moment, getting financial backing from a bank, whether it is a conventional bank or an Islamic, is going to be really rather difficult because that's just the unfortunate economic situation that impacts most people. Um, in the UK, I am aware that there are certain groups, there are a couple of funds that have been put together to almost as business angels, as we would like to call them in the UK, to actually come and to back and to make a contribution and to make that sort of investment. Um, and I think there are one or two that are operating in the UK who are very focused on Sharia compliant initiatives. Um, similarly, you know, there are others, They're not, and they just don't have to be in the, in the financial services space. It's the fact that the, the venture capital or the private equity is, is, is coming from a source that is very focused in that way. Otherwise, I would encourage um, all students to keep connected. Certainly in the UK at the moment, we are having a look at the university education provision. Financial services is quite important because we've noticed that across um, the British universities that do offer courses, there's a lot of, of disparity, there's a lot of difference. And so there's an, initi an initiative underway within the task force to bring that together and to have a look and to make sure that the universities talk more actively and offer more as well to visiting students from overseas. It's a very good program that I lecture in the summer each year as a, as a visitor to the Durham University and I think they have 300 overseas students. Not all were focused on Islamic financial services, but certainly the Islamic economy and where their business and entrepreneurship would uh, be taken to offer. <coughs> Uh, in charge, I'm um, as far as I'm just concerned with the EDF. People tend to take their advice on qualification. There are so many institutions around there. And from the economic viewpoint, if any graduate he wants to become a self-employed, self-employed, and he needs Islamic finance, yes, there are provisions. For example, if any particular person he wants to establish a small factory. So he may require term loan, he may require working capital finance, he may require standby facilities. In today's modern world, the full is put by the Islamic banks, they are providing all such kind of facilities. Right? He, if he wants for his capital, he gets a capital intensive, yes, they can, uh, they can get the fixed term loan, they can get, uh, of course, a compliant, they can get the working capital uh, finance as well, plus the standby facilities, be it letter of credit or letter of guarantees. Are any uh, silent participation in it, which is available? Thank you very much. Most of the news for the journey that are the most out of the table among the most not comes to all of the most of the most of the network. In fact, the company less trip and to Nadia, the party to the community is here. So, the total of the year, the total of the most Islamic good.